Welcome to the Business Blast Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Wagner. This episode is brought to you by Authors Unite. Authors Unite provides you with all the resources you need to become a successful author. You can learn more about Authors Unite and join the free community at authorsunite.com. Now, let's jump into the episode. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Business Blast podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Wagner. Today, I have a very special guest. His name is Jeremy Haynes. He's been running a digital marketing agency for the past two and a half years. He's taught in three Ty Lopez programs, and he used to work for Grant Cardone. So welcome to the show, Jeremy. What's going on, Tyler? Thanks for having me on, brother. Of course, man. I'm pumped to have you here. Uh, We'll dive into the first question. The first question I have for you, Jeremy, is what is the best story from your life that has an underlying valuable message? I get new stories that give me lessons every single day. I actually get a a calendar notification at 10 p.m. nightly that says stop and reflect on the truth and wisdom learned in today. That way I get new stuff every day. But some of the most profound things that have held me back in my life that that have uh, enabled me to evolve as a person have been some of the stuff that I've experienced growing up. I grew up in Ohio where there was factory workers. My mother was a babysitter. My father was a, my father was a factory worker. And you can imagine their friend circle and the types of people that they had hanging around them. I would play youth sports. That wouldn't really expose me to anybody of, of true wealth or of people that had true vision that were bringing that vision into reality. Growing up, I was constantly just getting battered by people who didn't have a fucking clue what was going on or how to make big bucks and, and create profound value in the world. So a lot of my stories, to be quite frank, Ty, I can go in depth on them, but they just come from my childhood. A lot of that shaped me as a person from my thinking, my drive. Uh, a lot of the pain that I've experienced growing up is an immense driver for me to be who I am today and, and provide others with value and insight. So there's not a lot of inspiration. Um, one one profound story out of everything. I was I think seven or eight years old, and I remember my father coming home from a twelve hour factory day. So six a.m. to six p.m. I think was his schedule at the time. He comes home at six, and it's my birthday that day, and I get completely disregarded. Um, my father comes home. He's a little pissed, and he actually takes me to a baseball field where I was practicing hitting balls uh, with my father pitching them to me. So this was to increase my skills at batting, of course. And it, tr- it shaped me as a kid, man. It truly did. Because I'll never forget coming back. I was so sad. I went back to my mom. I was like, Mom, what the, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why didn't I just go to baseballs on my birthday? Like, I was crying the whole time. It was, it was bad. Yeah. My mother told me something pretty profound. She said, you know, you, you don't get as many choices as you want until you can give yourself those choices. <laughs> and I'll oh. never forget that <laughs> little seven-year-old kid, man. It really gave me self-responsibility and started shaping my, my thinking. Wow, dude, that is profound. Seven years old, your mom lays that on you. That is freaking awesome. Lay it down, man. Lay it down. Uh, that is awesome. The uh, the next one I have for you is uh, I'm pumped for this one. What is the most valuable piece of information we should know that's within your expertise or industry? Math, time, and action. So many people disregard the basics of of fundamentals for how to bring goals to fruition. I know so many turds floating in the water that completely ignore (laughs) their goals every single day. They talk about them once a year and then they ignore them for the other 365 days and however many minutes there are in each day. They truly don't give a fuck about themselves, their goals, their families, they're selfish, they're so small-minded and they lie to themselves. There's a book called Vital Lies and Simple Truths. Rather than a piece of knowledge, it's a whole book full of knowledge that talks about, in 1994, a guy named Daniel Goldman broke this down, where he, he exposed that humans will rewrite, literally, Tyler, we will rewrite what we experience to avoid pain. So at the core of that, if there's anything in life that we disagree with or that causes us pain or that lowers our certainty for survival, we will literally rewrite it in our minds and our psychology will retain a different set of data that we justified into our psychology. Therefore, everybody, literally everybody that you meet will be lying to themselves in most cases to avoid pain. Therefore, they will not have a true perspective on reality. How do you keep a true perspective on reality? You don't try to justify to it. You don't try to lie to yourself about what it is. You use math. You factor in the time that it takes to do things and you factor in the magnitude of action that's necessary or the types of actions that are necessary to bring goals to fruition. If you're unsettled with the time it takes, 
you rework the magnitude of actions that you have to take or the types of actions that you take to get there faster. If you're not doing math, we didn't create numbers. We found numbers. Numbers are sacred. Numbers tell us in our dimension that we're on, we measure things. Length, width, height, weight. These are common variables that we have to utilize in order to find, engage things to make sense of this world. Therefore, if we're not doing that with our intangibles as well, such as goals, aka things that aren't real yet that we desire, what the fuck are we doing? What are entrepreneurs <laughs> doing? What are business people doing? They're not doing anything. Math, time, and action. Factor in how long it will take and what type of actions you need to take to do anything and make it real for yourself. Because it's as simple as that. It's literally just math, time, and action. It's that easy. <laughs> Dude, I knew it. Dude. And, uh, it's, complicated. It's, a, it's a laughable joke, you know what I mean? It's it like, is. I know. It's, you're confused and in chaos because you don't know anything, yet you want to do stuff, yet you refuse to self-educate about what it takes to do it, and, and you literally refuse to make it real for yourself from not breaking down how to actually make it happen. I, I can't wait for this episode to be uh, live. <laughs> um, the, uh, the next one I have for you is what is your best piece of overall business advice? It might tie in, but still ask. Yeah, if it, takes, if it takes five minutes, do it now. And if it's a skill, let me tell you a story. Okay, I'm not going to say the name of this person, but you, you were actually hanging out with him the other day too, so you know who I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have this personality brand that comes to my house. And all I do, literally all I do, Tyler, is I work with the world's large personality brands. It's not fluff. It's not some self-plug on your podcast. That's literally just what the fuck it is. Okay, I work with enormous people who have enormous egos usually. And some of them are extremely smart, humble, and do not have egos. However, nonetheless, they have positioning that enables them to think that they don't need to inherit certain skills and, and certain skill sets. So people think when they're entrepreneurs at any level, that as soon as they get employees or people around them that'll help them out, and this, this is from personal experience that I'm able to observe this as well, and then I see this in others now that I've observed it in my own experiences and it's become a truth. We put skills outside of ourselves, and if it takes five minutes or less, usually we still don't do those things because we place the skills outside of ourselves. So we don't even consider how much time some things we tell other people to do can take. Sometimes we're like, hey, can you do this thing? And it's just so, it's so out of the way for the other person to do in your team or for somebody else around you to handle because it takes less than five minutes and you can simply do it yourself. You put that skill outside of yourself. The story that I'm bringing up is, is this personality brands in my house the other day and you know, we're doing this webinar and we're building out this, uh, this, long, this long form sales copy and I have, to, I have to have him type up a PowerPoint to present in the webinar. And this personality brand, this enormous personality brand, partnered with nine-figure net worth individuals and truly like a, a very powerful person, yeah. and a very profound thinker and one of the most intelligent people you'll meet, one of my favorite people to talk to. Me I too. I know you're talking about. <laughs> so, so check this out. This person doesn't know how to use PowerPoint. <laughs> I was like, what the – are you joking? I literally I, – I stopped everything. I was like, dude, look me in the eyes of a man right now. Okay, you're two years older than me. And you don't know how to use fucking PowerPoint. That's, that's not okay. I said, that just goes to show that you've placed basic skills outside of yourself and you've given yourself the illusion that you can't do it when you can. And it takes less than five minutes to do the basic shit that I'm asking you to do. So, so this whole time, this guy who's a business owner, he's over here like outsourcing all these basic little tasks and they're adding another 10 minutes, another 15 minutes, another 20 minutes to the operational time of what it takes to get something that's pretty basic done just adds so much time, so much time, so much time. And when you just keep adding time to the thing, it just keeps pushing off the result that you can get as once again, life is all about right now. That's where we live at. So therefore we have to factor in the math, the time, and the actions. We're not observing. This is a good quote. I'm not going to say where it comes from, but it's a great quote. It's, it, it comes from a very profound book. And what it talks about is that an uncalculated force that is wasted in the void, think of steam. Okay, steam, when coming off of your stove top when you're boiling water, is, is completely fucking useless. It doesn't do anything. Literally nothing. It's just steam that gets sucked into that fan. Okay? Whereas steam also powers boats across the ocean back in the day. Think about that. So if you calculate a force like steam that has an energy to it and you just fucking waste it, that's it. It just gets wasted. But if you use it, and if you know how to use it, if you calculate how to use it, it can literally power a ship, and it can lead you to more profound and efficient ways to do the same thing better. So what I'm trying to say here is so many people, 
They don't do basic ass shit that takes them five minutes. They put skills outside of themselves that are so simple and so easy, and then they aren't calculating the force or anything that other people in their team, aka still their force, is doing in the world to bring things forward, and they're wondering why things are taking too long, or they're wondering why things aren't happening the right way, or they're wondering why things aren't getting them results once they're built. It takes a true meticulous perspective to do digital marketing related actions. But a lot of them are so simple to do, they're like two minutes here, five minutes here. If you have, there's a good book called The Knowledge Illusion. If you have The Knowledge Illusion and you place the fact that you know things when you don't, which means you've placed the fact in your confidence that you know something outside of yourself into something else, that's what, that's what I find business owners do most. So basic shit they don't do, they act like they can't do it, and that completely fucks them in their operational process, and then months go by and they don't do basic things that take like three hours. Yes, that's huge. Um, and if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? Go harder. You have more potential. Potential is unlimited. You have limits. And I'm excited for this one too. In your opinion, what is the key to happiness? I believe a balance is a key to happiness. I've been a babysitter in my life when it comes to having 22 different staff in my in my team and just having to go from department to department to department to to person to person, uh, even even back in the day when I didn't have any team and I was just growing up, you know, if I would go too hard at working with not enough balance, I wouldn't have as happy or, a, or as a fulfilled time while I was working. Whereas if I balance it, for example, right now in Miami Beach here, I live at what I call the island compound. So I live on this little island and I call it the compound because it's this, it's this enormous condo building that... It's got a pool, it's got the jacuzzi, it's got a basketball court, it's got a tennis court. I'm not saying this shit to brag, I'm saying it to describe like what the compound is. It's got, it's got the workout uh, area over there, it's got you know fucking dock outside, I got a place I can kayak and you know, jet ski and boat and all that fun stuff. There's like little islands that are you know just like beaches and stuff like that around here that you can go to for adventures. So it's really cool. So if I go you know six hours in the middle of the day like building funnels or, or just doing sales or just fixing my team or doing whatever I'm doing, I can then, you know, for an hour or so, like go work out or go play basketball or go play tennis or, you know, call you up since you're here in Miami and go do something. And there's, yeah. there's so many activities, but they're right within my reach here that it's not an inconvenience to go do them. I know so many people that, you know, they try to incorporate this work-life balance, but they're caught driving in between. It's like, I don't even drive anymore. I seek efficiencies. There's so many things that you can do and that can be done, but for a true potential that you haven't found yet to be tapped, it will take an extreme happiness. And it, it comes from passion. It comes from fulfillment. It comes from wanting to do what most people don't want to do. And I find that balancing my life, traveling, um, you know, having a partner is, is all incredible assets along the journey to, to have more happiness. Yes, dude. I got to give you some credit right there. I actually got rid of my car from reading one of your uh, Instagram posts and I cannot tell you how amazing it is. And, and obviously, you know, depending on where you live, but, that car, dude. but dude, like it was, dude, it's changed because I live right in South Beach and like everything's walking distance, dude, or Uber, or Lyft, whatever. And just not having to even think or deal with a car, dude, it's like just been like a weight off the of shoulders. So much. You don't you actually don't know the life of what it's like to be driven around for for what you can do in the back of a car like i've made more in the back of cars than i have sometimes in crazy offices when people are <laughs> coming, coming knocking on my door it's like the phone calls you can take you give a con okay somebody on, on this podcast right now definitely listen is like well i can fucking take a phone call while i'm driving okay dipshit well you're driving at the same time so your brain is focusing on driving and all the things that you've automated which still lower your energy and your conscious focus for being on the phone call. I'm slamming 100K deals because I have a concentrated focus while you're barely closing a thousand dollar deal because you can't focus at all <laughs> and you're driving around your turd mobile still thinking you're cool. It doesn't matter what kind of car you have. It is inefficient to do, period, period. You can do so much more. You lower your stress levels. You give yourself more energy. Here's the secret to life, guys. Our brains are hardwired, literally hardwired around increasing our survival potential increasing our certainty and lowering our odds for dying. Therefore, if you are in the back of a car getting driven around and you are you are not exerting as much energy, that means you don't have as much stress. That means you have more energy to exert in the other areas that are necessary for you to exert energy. That means you're gonna have higher probabilities to get results in those areas because you're gonna have more certainty in those areas. You're gonna take advantage of your own neurological structure when you sell your car and start taking Uber everywhere. And let's be clear too. I'm not talking about regular Uber. I'm talking take take the fucking nice Uber, okay? Here in Miami, there's no 
uber black or uber select. It's just you, you either ball out or you don't, okay? I take Uber Lux everywhere I go. I want a nice driver who's professional. It gives, you a, it gives you a different feeling too. What's the difference between Jay-Z and you? Different actions, different lifestyle. That comes from the different actions that he takes. What's the difference between you and Will Smith? Different actions. What's the difference between you and every famous entrepreneur that you knew that, that is very successful? They're just taking different actions. You can't grocery shop when you could use Instacart and get your groceries delivered. You should not be buying and making food in the middle of the day and spending two hours to go to lunch. Dude, get the fucking food delivered and like Elon Musk, slam it in five minutes and get your ass back to work. There's there's so many things that people just waste time on in the middle of the day. Driving's a big one, but I could go I could go for a while. <laughs> efficiencies. The long story short, is seek efficiencies in your life. And uh, next question is what is <laughs> what is the best dude, this one I, I don't even know if you'll be able to answer. Actually I know you will, but like I don't know if you have just one, because I know you read a lot. What is the best book that you've read and what was the number one thing you learned from it? Yeah, I mean it depends on the depends on the time frame that I'm in or yeah. what what kind of learning I want to do. Okay. One of the most well rounded books, period, that you can read is Principles by Ray Dalio. It is a Great book filled with universal truths and if the shoe fits principles, they'll, they'll greatly enhance your life and your lifestyle for sure. If you want to go a little more advanced on, on some advanced psychology, I would tell people to introduce themselves to neuro-linguistic programming through Richard Bandler and his book called Frogs and Princes. That will profoundly change your life in the way that you interpret yourself and your ability to communicate with others. And then I would, I would tell people, I would encourage people. Um, continue studying neuroscience and continue studying psychology at all costs. As a marketer, I can't tell you, it doesn't matter what kind of business that you're ever going to be in, those two fields will apply to what you do. They'll apply to your personal life, to your family life, to your jobs, to your business. It does not matter. When you study books like The Owner's Manual for the Brain, is a thick book that will give you so much insight on neuroscience. Each specific section goes into detail with the actions and how you can apply that specific data that they just gave you into your life. It is profound of what that does. Um, the Laws of Success by Napoleon Hill, another thick book, uh, kind of an expanded an expanded version of, of Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, the same gentleman. Great book there on, on general success principles. There, there's so many I can name. I read six okay. hours a day now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is your favorite quote and why? Mm, I, I stick to a few different quotes depending on what the circumstances are. But if I had, if I had one profound quote that's really stuck with me, it would, it would be what I already mentioned with if it takes five minutes or less, just do it now. That's sped up my life so much I, I can't even explain. I would also say you deserve to think. There's been different times in my life where I see so many people that they just put thinking outside of themselves. They, they don't give themselves time to think. Like they, they act like they shouldn't be planning and strategizing and visualizing data. And they act like they shouldn't be putting themselves in a, in a study and, and giving themselves time to think. Uh, and, and lastly, most people hate themselves. Great quote, you got to love yourself. you got to love yourself. you got to put yourself first. You've got to make sure that you're taken care of, personal hygiene, get yourself pampered here and there make sure you love yourself though i, I had um one of my mentors tell me one time that each time i would learn something new i would like beat myself up after i would after i would learn something new i would essentially learn something and then i would say something like ah shit you know, i can't believe i didn't know that or ah shit yeah no you're right you're right and, and it's like these little things that are coming out of our mouths we ignore and we just act like they're they're normal things, but what it is is feedback. What we're shouting out, we're pounding in. So you got to love yourself. There are a lot of different ways you can tell that you hate yourself. You're not eating enough during the day. You have an acidic diet. You're eating shitty foods. You're not working out enough. You're not reading. You're not talking to incredible people. You're not pampering yourself and taking care of yourself, basic personal hygiene. You're not going and doing basic things like getting checkups or you know, dental work or just being basic adult responsibilities. There, there are little things that really represent that you hate yourself. And I would tell people on this podcast, really, take a look at yourself and see if that if that fits, because that'll change your life greatly if it does. Always love yourself. Yes. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. I knew it would be an amazing uh, interview. The last question I have for you before I let you go is, where's the best place for people to find you online? Jimmy on Instagram, at Jeremy. 
J E R E M Y. It's just my name. And you search it in Instagram, it might be like the, the fifth or sixth option down there. But my full name is Jeremy Haynes. You, you can search that on any social media. Hit me up. Be direct with me. Uh, don't don't say any bullshit like "Hey" or "What's up." Just you know, ask ask a question, and uh, I'll help you out in any way I can. Awesome, man. Thank you again. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate it, Tyler. Thanks for having me, man. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.